Hello everyone, welcome back to Newsroom. I'm Chella Smith. This is your Middle East U.S. entertainment news here on YouTube. I air on Fridays. I bring you the latest on reforms and economics Iraq based on reports put out by the Middle East news media outlets. I do this weekly review and it's based off my interest. Thank you everyone for joining me. Last week we talked about Congress amending the Military Force Act, the draft Kurds oil and gas bill, the private sector and OPEC reforms. Iraq's moving into fourth place in the Arab communities with the U.S. Treasury bonds and MasterCards being utilized in Iraq. Let's take a look at this week's headlines. Shafak News reports the Iraqi President Abdullah Rashid stresses today the need to accelerate progress in the field of water cooperation, noting that more efficient and effective management of available water resources by the riparian countries is important for the country. This came during the participation of the President of the Republic in the interreactive dialogue session of the International Cooperating in the Fields of Transboundary Water within the Activities of the United Nations Water conference, which was held in New York, according to the statement by Shafak News. The world is not currently on track to implement integrated water resource management plans at all levels, Rishi says, noting that the estimated indicated that 107 countries are not on the track to sustainable management water resources by 2030. Iraq is facing a water crisis and over the past 40 years, water flowing from the Tigris and Euphrates River, which provides up to 98% of the surface water, has decreased by 30 to 40%, causing the drying up of marshes in the southern Iraq that have been included in the World's Heritage List. In conclusion, Rashid strongly encourages all countries to follow Iraq in acceding to both of the United United Nations Convention of the 1997 on the Law of Non-Navigational Uses of International Water Courses and the 1992 Convention of the Protection and Use of Transboundary Water Courses on International Lakes and calls on the international community to honestly promote the implementation of Goal 6.5 of the Sustainable Development Goals. And tomorrow, the Iraqi Parliament sets a date for the new session to vote in on the country's election law, explaining that the Parliament Finance is working quickly to finalize the procedures for passing the three-year draft budget as they received this bill last week. The media department of the Iraqi Parliament said, according to the Iraqi News Channel on Friday, they stated that the session will also include a, the third amendment to the provincial council election, adding that the extent of the council's conviction of the answers of the Iraqi Media Network Board of Trustees will be voted in on a Friday. The department explained that the Parliament's Finance Committee is determined to complete the budget quickly, stressing that it will be included in the Council's agenda in the future sessions. Baghdad Magazine News reports the Ministry of Oil announces yesterday that the oil product distribution company has started experimenting with the electronic payment process, the POS, as a number of fuel filling stations in Baghdad. Ministry spokesman Azam Jihad says in a statement that the oil product distribution company, in cooperation with the Central Bank of Iraq and electronic payment processing collection service companies, began yesterday yesterday the electronic payment experiment at the Al Hara station in Baghdad and in preparation for the practical application and generalize the experience in Baghdad and the governorates as of early next May. Jaheed pointed out that the importance of adopting the civilized experiment in promoting and supporting the national economy through the applications of electronic fuel does collect services, which reduces the burden on citizens and fuel filling stations at the same time, upgrading the level of service provided to citizens and protecting the public money, as well as switching from the paper payment system to electronic. Shafak News then reports the federal Supreme Court, the highest judicial authority in Iraq responds to the request for the state order to stop the disbursement of 400 billion dinars by the Ministry of Finance to the Kyrgyzstan region submitted by the MP Mustafa Sanad. The court attributed the refusal to the issue of the state order in this regards for two reasons. The first is the absence of urgency in it 
And the second is the deciding on its means entering into the origin of the right and giving a prior opinion in the case. The federal Supreme Court decides to reject the request of the request to issue the state order under Mustafa Jabbar Sanad, according to the appended decision signed by the president of the court. For his part, the MP Mustafa Jabbar Janad confirms in a blog on social networking site that the federal court rejected his claim by requesting an urgent loyal order stop disbursement against the federal government and the TBI bank about granting a loan of 400 billion dinars from the bank. He added that the state order was returned, but the lawsuit is still open for decision in the coming months. At the end of 2022, the federal government agreed to send 400 billion dinars to the region to finance the salaries of employees for the month of November and December 1 of the same year. The Ministry and Finance of Economy and Kyrgyzstan Regional Government the Ministry of Finance and Economy of the Kyrgyzstan Regional Government announced that it had received the amount on March 13th. Economy News reports the Central Bank of Iraq announced on Monday the size of lending amounts with its projects initiative while revealing the presence of more than $70 trillion outside the banking system for trading. The governor of the Central Bank of Iraq, Ali Alalak, said in a speech at the conference to activate lending programs in Iraq. He says, we thank the Association of Banks and the United States Agency for Development for keeping pace with the banking sector and attempts to promote it and push it with grants that achieve the desired goal for the Iraqi economy. Ali Alak added that the bank's lending represents the main pillar in the work of banking sector, whether it's with regards to revenues, profits, or operation, or regards to economic activities in various forms. He pointed out that the central bank was a pioneer in stimulating the lending capabilities of the bank sector. In in 2015, he says, we launched an initiative that is perhaps the largest in history of Iraq, which was allocates to 5 trillion dinars to industrial, agriculture, and housing projects, as well as 1 trillion dinars to small and medium enterprises, noting that this initiative was able to stimulate the Iraqi economy significantly, whether at a level of some projects or in solving the housing problems, but providing lending to the housing sector. He pointed out that the amount that has been lent so far amounts to about 13 trillion dinars, which is very large amount, adding that we are now in the process of evaluating these initiatives, taking advantage of the lessons and putting them in the right direction and focusing them in specific goals. Alfred News reported the National Bank of Iraq announces on Saturday officially starting its business in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, pointing out that the concession occurs for the first time in financial history of Iraq, as it is a financial leap and banks can now provide its corporate service innovation services and solutions to corporate sectors in Saudi markets. The National Bank of Iraq says in a statement received by Euphrates News that it participated in the second edition of the Financial Sector Conference, which began on March 15th and 16th at the King Abdulaziz International Convention Center in Riyadh. He pointed out that the governor of the Central Bank of Saudi Arabia handed over the Certificate of Banking Business to the CEO of the National Bank of Iraq in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in the presence of the authorized director of the National Bank of Iraq and the executive vice president of the Capital Bank Group for International Expansion. In addition to the decision makers in the financial sector and senior executive in financial institutions locally, regionally, and internationally. The statement quoted that the authorized director of the National Bank of Iraq, Amin Abdul Dahim, stressing the importance of presence of the National Bank of Iraq in such type of international region conference, explaining that will allow the exchange of ideas, experiences, and cooperations in areas that we'll discuss during the conference, in addition to communication and linking with groups of
of representatives of lending banks in the region and in the world. Not to mention opening new horizons for the bank work by discussing possible business opportunities in Saudi markets. For his part, the CEO of the National Bank of Iraq in Saudi Arabia expressed his happiness with the bank's participation in the conference, which is in an international regional platform that reflects the strength of the kingdom's economy in the region, where the bank had an opportunity to introduce its innovative banking services and solutions to thousands of participants with diverse experiences in the various fields of sector represented from the lending banks, market specialists, and investment leaders from Asia, Europe, and North America. Abunian explained that the financial sector conference is a special opportunity for the National Bank of Iraq to see closely with the qualitative leaps achieved by the financial service sector in parallel with continuous development in the business and services in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, in addition to possibility of exchanging views and experiences with representatives of the lending bank participated in the conference. And you've been watching Newsroom Weekly Review. I'm Chella Smith, your Middle East U.S. entertainment news on reforms and economics Iraq. I try to bring you all the latest in our news without having to keep up with all the different outlets. I'm here on YouTube every Friday, so don't forget to subscribe and turn those notification bells on. If you like my content, give me a thumbs up. If you really like my content, you can always leave a super thanks. Again, thank you for being a subscriber and thank you for visiting Newsroom Chella Smith for your trusted Dinar news. I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Thank you.